Hello, my dears. My name is Joanna, and I welcome you to Johanna Takonis, the deconstruction of CPDC podcast. In this episode, we will talk about the subconsciousness, which is the key to everything, at least PTSD healing wise related. So you can also use it to gain unbelievable control over your body, as shown by Shaolin monks, for example. But that is not my field of expertise. We talk about the main key to remove triggers, find hidden ones, deal with trauma, find it, and so on. So, let us talk about it. Like with most sociological terms, and sociology itself, a lot of people have difficult grasping it, as it has no real physical counterpart. It is more like something is described to the person, and the source is, trust me. That is usually why I try to find real-life examples of what is going on, with varying level of success. The other problem is that psychology is quite a young field, and there are a lot of gap and wrong perceptions and the like. Studying something that you can see and need to rely on other person's information what they feel or see is just bound to have a lot of issues. But what is the subconsciousness? Processes that you don't directly control. In an example, you would be the manager slash boss and your subconsciousness is your personal assistant. The personal assistant will take care of the worker, aka your subroutines, unless you take direct control. It will take care of anything you don't really need to care about, be it breathing, hormone regulation, emotions, muscles and the like. It also translates what you want to do to your subroutines, aka workers. So that is one hell of a personal assistant who naturally doesn't get remotely the recognition it deserves, who basically wants a show. Before we start, I want to clear up why I'm using the word subconsciousness and not unconsciousness. First, because the word has the other meaning of knocked out and that irritates me to no end. But secondly, and more importantly, because of the meaning of the words. You see, there is a debate going on for a little decades which of those two words should be used. To make it short, subconsciousness means you can access, influence, etc. it directly or indirectly. For example, you can influence your emotions, but you don't have full control over them or know why you feel that way. The word unconsciousness means you not access, influence, etc. it. It refers to process so deep in your brain that you have no way of interacting with it in any way or shape. The debate mentioned before is about how much of a brain is subconscious and how much is unconscious. An answer will most likely not be found in the next decades, which is why I ignore this sort of thing usually. But after looking a lot into it, I also no longer believe that there's a process we can't access, influence, etc., even if it might take ages to accomplish it. Therefore, I use the word subconsciousness. You see, the part that our brain that uses language and we use to control ourselves is actually only a small part of the brain. Only we use words, sentences, names, etc. The other parts of the brain use something else. It is like you are on the bridge of a ship. Now, to continue this example, let us say you speak English, but everyone else on the ship speaks Spanish. No one speaks a word of the other language. Which is usually not a problem, because everyone knows what their job is and they are usually quite good at it. The problem arises when the ship runs into any form of trouble, or things just don't go as intended. Suddenly the well-oiled machine can completely come to a standstill or just get slower. It depends on what is happening. Even if not understood, the bridge angrily shouting at a section usually gets a message across. But what happens if something truly big is happening? Affecting multiple sections? A severe hit? Sabotage? What do you do then? How can you communicate and get the ship back on track? There is only one way. You need to learn to imitate Spanish or at least be able to signal the sections what to do. So now you might ask, for what sort of communication did I use Spanish in our example? Well, it kind of depends on the section we are talking about. The deeper we go, the more abstract the communication becomes. But that is often not necessary. 
They usually communicate via metaphors, emotions, sound, pictures, gestures, quotation mark, video, objects, and the like. One must remember that our brains developed over time. It isn't one thing like a piece of chocolate. Our brain is a bit like layered cake or your laundry. Different segments that were made under different circumstances that are fulfilling different tasks. The brain segment you are in control of is the most advanced part. To simplify it. That means you can learn the other methods of communicating, but they can't really learn yours. It takes a bit of time to learn the other ways of communication, but once you did, it will not go away. This will open quite a few doors and most importantly will give you important information regarding your PTSD. So that was it for today's episode. I plan to go next week into why the subconsciousness is so crucial and how we can use it. We will see. Otherwise, I really hope you are safe and take good care of yourself. As usual, if you have any questions or feedback and the like, please let me know at your, contact me at johannatakonis.com. More information and transcripts you can find as usually under johannatakonis.com slash podcast. Information regarding therapy you can find under johannatakonis.com slash therapy and links under the description. I hope to see you next time. Watch yourself and have a wonderful time.